When the Ocean Gate Titan submersible was first lowered into the water at the beginning of its fateful mission on June 18th, 2023, it left the Lars platform at 9.14 a.m. and began its descent with Stockton, Russia at the helm. And it began its long descent 12,500 feet down in the North Atlantic Ocean. All the way down that 12,500 foot drop down to the Titanic wreckage where they hoped to be able to witness it firsthand themselves. And communicating back and forth with the mothership up above, they sent a lot of text messages, including this one that has become very controversial from people who have seen my videos. Everything was going fine here. And, and then here's where the trouble starts. All of a sudden at 10.47.02, Titan sends a text message to the Polar Prince saying, dropped two weights. That's the last time we've ever heard from them. And then all of a sudden something drastic happens. Seven seconds after sending that last text message, the Titan submersible implodes at 10.47.09 a.m. I will put a link down in the video description below to this Titan book that I also told you about in the last video. Highly suggest you pick yourself up a copy of this nice paperback book here. This is called Titan to the Titanic and Back 13 and a half times by Gordon Telepan. And what I really like about this book, it has everything you could ever possibly want to know about the Titan from the history of the company all the way to the end, to the last day of the implosion. This is about 300 pages. You can also get the Kindle version and download that. And you can also get a PDF version, which is really cool because you can search. So this right here will save you from having to sift through hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos all over the web because all of the answers and all of the key points that you need to know about this entire engineering disaster is right here in the book including all of the mistakes made during the manufacturing of the ocean gate titan submersible carbon fiber hull and if you know anybody who's an engineer or going into engineering or in college for engineering then you'd better buy them this book so it doesn't matter if they're a software engineer or an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer or even a structural civil type engineer because any type of engineer should be able to learn from the mistakes that were made here. It's just unbelievable. So what a great learning tool this would be for them to study as they're going through school. And what I find especially useful is these key talking points that witnesses made during the Marine Board investigation there. And, and it's got the timestamps from the videos too. So you can go directly to the US Coast Guard's live streams from the Marine Board investigation. And you could directly find those timestamps in there and listen to the conversations that were had. Now, over the course of the last few videos I've uploaded on the Ocean Gate Titan Submersible, many of you have posed a lot of comments and numerous questions asking about, you know, why did they need to drop two weights? What was going on with these two weights here? And could the dropping of these two weights have caused the implosion of the Ocean Gate Titan Submersible? So as you can see here, there was just numerous questions, one after another, after another have been left here on my videos. So there seems to be a lot of confusion from people, from a lot of people actually, as to what is the reason that we're actually dropping these weights and what's really happening. And so we're going to examine, could the dropping of these two weights have possibly led to the implosion of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible? Now, a number of people left comments suggesting that the reason why they dropped the two weights was because they need to get back up to the surface really quick. There was some kind of emergency. Maybe they heard the cracking. So it's important to understand that based on what we know about the comms and these abbreviations that they used, remember David Pogue posted that picture of it. So if they were indeed in an emergency and they get to shoot back up real quick, we need to resurface now. They're not going to send this long message that says dropped two weights. Dropped two weights. Titan dropped two weights. Copy, Titan dropped two weights. They're going to type in this message here. So you can see here by looking at the chart that this is what they would type in. They would probably type in the XXX or SOS because here it says surfacing immediately you know, from the, from the sub side, and that's emergency. That would be an emergency. We need to surface right now. And then of course, send help would be SOS here. 
So this is most likely what they would send. They would not take the time to type in that longer message, which is dropped two weights. So you can see by them sending up that message that says dropped two weights, that meant they had a little bit more luxury of time to sit there and type down this longer message, which meant things were operating as normal right up until that time. So had there been an emergency, it would be like XXX, boom, and they probably would have sent that message three or four times also, XXX, XXX, XXX. That's what I would have done. I would have been just keep on sending it up. So there really are two main reasons here why the fact that they dropped two weights does not mean that they were trying to resurface. Because first of all, if you were trying to resurface, you're not going to drop two weights because that does not make you buoyant. It doesn't make you reverse and go back up again. It does make you a little bit more buoyant than you were. So all it does is just slow the ascent down. So they typically will drop these two weights, which is about 70 pounds total when they're about, I don't know, three or 400 meters from the Titanic wreckage site there. So that it'll slow their descent down so they don't come crashing down on the, to the bottom onto the seabed there. And don't worry, they're hundreds of yards off of the Titanic. That's the rule. They have to be hundreds of yards away, come down easy, and then work their way back towards it. So the fact that dropping only two weights means that you're not going to go back up. It's not enough to ascend rapidly. So if you were going to ascend rapidly due to a, a some type of catastrophe going on, uh, you would drop all of the weights, which is about 400 pounds total. Okay, so could the jettisoning of those two weights have caused the implosion of the Titan? And uh, the reason here is, is no, there's a, a couple of things here that I wanted to point out about this. First of all, remember that every time that Titan went down, it was going through this cyclic fatigue. It was getting compressed and then it decompresses when it goes back up again. So it's got all of this popping and cracking going on, and it was already just about at its limit. But remember, each time it goes down, it's getting derated now due to all of those pops and cracks, and you even have no way of quantizing how bad those are. But you just know that, it, let's say it was rated for 6,000 meters at the beginning, it wouldn't be rated for that now, that's the problem. So I think it was just a coincidence. It was just that was its time to go at that particular point in time. Now, the other thing too is the weights. The other thing is that the weights are not in contact with the cylindrical pressure vessel, right? So a lot of people think that the weights are attached to it and that somehow dropping the weights does something to the hull. So let me show you what's really happening. Okay, so as you look at the, the picture of the Titan sitting here, remember the cylindrical hull is inside all of this stuff. And this stuff is not attached to it. This stuff is all attached to the sled and also to the segments, which are made out of titanium. So everything attaches to there, the sleds and all. So the actual carbon fiber hull is in here and it's well protected from everything. That Nothing is piercing it. So all of the weights are going to hang over here. So now when you come and you look at the side of the Titan, this is where the weights are, are all stored on the outside here. And so they'll just be dropped from here when they want to ascend. So when it says drop two weights, it was probably a couple of weights that were sitting out here, as far as we know. And so by dropping those two weights, it doesn't cause any movement or anything on the hull itself. And by the way, this here was my favorite comment of all. So you can see my videos are good for your health and they do provide lots of fiber. And some people might say, well, does the change in buoyancy maybe do something? Not really, because it has such a, a small effect on the speed. And the fact that it, it only dropped uh, about 10 seconds later before it, it imploded, that shows there that the pressure isn't that much different between that, what, about 15 feet or so that it probably dropped in that time frame. So it was already going to implode. I think even if they hadn't dropped those weights, the thing just would have buckled in on them anyhow. It was just their time to go. Hey, and make sure you keep those questions coming too. And by the way, if you haven't seen the video that I did over here a couple of weeks ago on the Coast Guard's final report, what are you nuts? Why haven't you seen it? Get over there and see that video. And then you can also see this other haunting video that I put up a couple of months ago when Randy Rush heard the actual sound of the implosion while up on the Polar Prince. So thank you for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.